how do challengers 1v9 their gangs in the top lane? Like, what is it that I'm not doing? Is it something to do with how I'm trading? Maybe a bit of wave management? Or is it the skin I'm using? What's up, Game Weaver? Oh, the cheers. And top lane is the most volatile lane of them all. So by the end of today's video, you will have all the tips and tricks you need to crush your opponent every single game. So we're going to be comparing how a pro player plays set, and you can apply all of the tactics in this video on any top lane champion to how a platinum player plays set. So let's start with the challenger set, Kingen, who is a pro player for DRX, a team in the LCK, and he does something all of us should do when we are playing against a weaker level 1 champion. He hunts down the enemy top laner. So if you're on the red side, you can run straight through this tri brush into the top river brush, and so many players will be sitting in here AFK. But because the enemy Aurelia is also of a challenger standard, she knows that avoiding set is crucial, so she isn't here. Now set waits for at least 10 seconds, almost hoping Aurelia makes that mistake of face checking this brush, and trusts her not to. But that doesn't mean we stop hunting. What about these top lane brushes? Did we check them? So we clear these out and look, a wild Aurelia appears. But again, because she's challenger, she runs away. This is so important to do because not only are we making use of our level 1 advantage, but the lane starts immediately. Not when the first wave gets to the lane, it starts right off the bat. Now if we switch over to Platinum Set, he does an excellent job of executing this hunting down strategy, but shoots himself in the foot with what he does afterwards, and we'll see that very soon. Knowing that this tri brush might have 5 enemy champions in it, he focuses his attention on clearing out the lane brushes just like Kingen, the challenger set we just looked at, and even though Riven isn't here, if she was, that's a fight we always win. So by doing this, you are giving yourself a chance to win the lane before it's even started. But what if the enemy champion just avoids us? Well, let's go back to the challenger game, and just because we haven't fisty cuffed yet doesn't mean we have zero chance of doing so. We can still catch the enemy champion when they run to the lane, be it through the lane itself or through the river. So Kingen pounces on the enemy Aurelia, and the time to do this is when your opponent is in line with their ranged minions. It's also important to run out of the brush at the furthest point, because this gives you the chance of getting behind your enemy, and we'll see why this is so vital very soon. So Kingen simply auto attacks and pushes Aurelia off the wave, but you might think, why wouldn't Aurelia just stay in the minion wave? Wouldn't Set take way too much creep aggro? Well, Set is giga strong level 1 because of his passive and his E, his face breaker. He can stun the minion wave mid combo, which resets the minion aggro, so he actually takes less damage than you think. So Aurelia moving up this far is actually a big blunder, and she gets chunked for it. It's also important to point out that Kingen skilled his E first, and this is great for trading because the stun stops the enemy champion from dealing damage, but allows you to get in two more passive auto attacks for free. Now let's watch Small Super Dream, our platinum set, and for some reason he decides to run out before Riven has even moved up to the minions, and this gives Riven time to back off as she wanted to, but what's even worse is the fact he skills his W and not his E. So he could have interrupted Riven's third Q mid air and won the trade super hard, and this shows you how specific the differences between the best and the rest are. Now just a quick tip, when Platinum Set uses his W to last hit these minions, he doesn't have any cooldowns to fire Riven, and he would have lost his trade if Riven didn't auto attack a minion and then run back in. So he gets away with it, but against a better player, he would have been punished super hard. But he forces Riven out of the lane by using his Ignite and gets her flash, so not all bad, and then he hard pushes the minion wave so he can recall, but this right here is actually a criminal mistake that so many players in lower elos make. Yes, we want to hit level 2 so Riven can't teleport back to the wave and pressure us, but we also don't want to hard push too hard, otherwise we are going to miss minions. Now this might be hard to envision, but if I let this play out, when this wave crashes into Riven's tower, can you see this next minion wave? Well, some of these minions are going to die before Set gets back to the lane, so he misses more golden experience than he has to. So what should he have done? Well, after he hits level 2, this is all good. All he has to do though at this point is stack one more wave and that's all by last hitting. That's the first part and then when the next wave arrives in lane, that's when he can hard push. This means he gets all of the minions from that third wave he actually misses and this would also bounce the next wave back to the middle of the lane. So essentially you minimize your golden experience losses by doing this. Stack and shove. Now speaking of slow pushing, if we return to the challenger set, you also want to just last hit when you chunk the enemy champion at level 1 so you have a significant HP advantage and when the wave is close to the middle of the lane. This means that for Aurelia, it's much riskier to CS because she has to run further away from her tower. And for you, this means you move as slowly as possible away from yours. But to give yourself an opportunity to fight the enemy champion still, and we still do because we are stronger at level 1, we can position beyond the enemy minions, and even when the next wave gets to the lane, we can just run through it, knowing we hard win trades early on. But it's essential to cut your opponent off if you want to fight them. So you can see that Aurelia does not want any of it, and she makes a Usain Bolt for her tower. So instead of chasing her and being behind her, which does nothing, Kingen moves parallel to her and towards that safety. This allows him to catch her before that point, and he gets her perilously low. These little movements and wave tactics are huge. Now, once the wave is under your opponent's tower, you can still trade with the enemy champion, and it sounds like an inting strategy, but when you have your minions under the tower with you, if you can bait the enemy champion into targeting you with auto attacks or lock-on abilities, they will draw that minion aggro. 
And the other reason this is so good is because they use their cooldowns while you still have all of yours. So you can walk up to the tower and start hitting it like Kingen does and watch what his minions do when Aurelia queues onto him. They start hitting the Aurelia. This damage allows Kingen to then combo her for a kill. Note how he E's and then instantly W's, knowing Aurelia cannot dodge it. Now he does die, trying to flash away, but he has more minions than Aurelia and therefore more gold, so he is still ahead in this lane. This is something the Platinum set could have done as well. And if you are enjoying these in-depth breakdowns of different ELOs, make sure to let the Jizen Co know by leaving a like down below. And let's go back to the Platinum set, I've missed him. Now what he's about to do is something that everyone in Platinum and below does, and this will get you killed, on the Rift that is. Now just a quick tip before we show the int. Warding is obviously important, and a good time to place a trinket is while you are running back to your lane. So as Sam moves past this wall, he can quickly place a trinket in this river brush, and all he would have to do at that point is relax, and let the enemy wave push into him. But instead, Riven is level 3, Set is level 2, Riven has more minions, so what should Set not do? Fight, that's it. And just because this Riven has two Zeds in her name, he takes this fight on, and is anyone surprised when the Super Dream hits the deck? If Riven was better at weaving in auto attacks between her spells as well, he would have died in the 1v1 regardless. So respect the minion disadvantage and their level advantage. These are crucial conditions we have to consider in the top lane. Now Super Dream, our Platinum set, makes the same minion wave mistake when he returns to lane. You see, this wave is in a really nice spot for him. It's close to his tower, and the Riven has to venture out to contest the wave. But for some reason, Platinum set does not want to be safe. He starts auto attacking the minions for no reason and relentlessly auto attacks the next wave as well. This means that when his wave crashes into Riven's tower, it does not bounce back to the middle. So the correct play is to simply last it. So you stack a wave and until it gets past the equator of the rift, that's when you can hard push and go nuts. As a result of this, Set is in a risky position and he even misses a melee minion's worth of golden experience for going to war. Just because your wave is pushing does not mean you have to hard push all the time. For example, let's go back to Challenger Set and even though this minion wave is close to Aurelia's tower, the minions are even. So we never want to just hard push in situations like this because we screw ourselves over in the future. So Kingen just last hits, and by keeping the wave in this position by last hitting, he is able to trade with the weaker Aurelia. Again, notice how he follows his E stun with a W so Aurelia can't dodge it, and he eventually takes down his opponent. This is what can happen if you don't perma shove. But even the best of us make mistakes. What do you think Kingen should do after killing this Aurelia? Now neither of them have teleport, and the wave is pushing towards set. Now if you said recall, well you're hacking. But it's actually right. Not only is the wave going to be in a great position for when we get back to the lane, but we are also matching the Aurelia. When she runs back to lane, we run back to lane, so she doesn't have any time to CS without us being in the lane. This overstaying, as you can see, is very risky because it leaves you open to other threats, in particular the enemy jungler. But Kingen is still ahead of the Aurelia, and is going to show us all how to manage these minion ways when our lane is pushing, like a challenger. So is he auto-attacking on repeat like the Platinum set? No, he is simply last hitting. This builds a bigger wave, which then makes it harder for Aurelia to trade, and again, makes it hard to punish you because you are staying as close to your tower for as long as possible. And guess what? Because we are keeping the wave closer to our tower for an extended period of time, this creates space for our own jungler to gank. Even when Kingdom returns to the minions here, he keeps on last hitting, and it is only until his wave is bigger than Bro Guide's ad spend that he then hard pushes. You have to master this technique if you want to climb to the top. Get it? Because we're doing a top lane video. And at the end of this sequence, Aurelia dies under her tower again. Now this time, it is only possible because Aurelian Soul is here as well. But same thing as before. King and walks up and auto attacks the tower, Aurelia draws some minion aggro after attacking set, and after that it's just about harmonizing your abilities and down she goes. Now if you want even more tips and tricks on top lane and how to put your opponents in the dirt 24-7, make sure to check out the Game Week website. Our challenger creators upload up to 20 videos a week for our subscribers, so click on one of those links in the description and comment section. Now who remembers Platinum set and when he decided to perma shove every minion wave? Well at the end of this play, he dies for it, and when he returns to the top lane, can you take a guess at what he does to these minions? If you've been paying any attention, you will know he is just going to mentally AFK and hard push yet again. And I've got one more question for you. What do you think is going to happen when he's this far behind the Riven and his wave is on her side of the lane? That's right, he dies again. But even when we have a big as lead on our opponent, we have to show a bit of respect to their teammates who might be fed themselves. So when we look at Challenger set return to lane after tower diving the Aurelia, he starts fighting instantly because he has a level advantage and an item advantage. But the enemy Lee Sin shows on this tribrush ward. So Kingen, instead of continuing to punch on with Aurelia, respects it and backs off. But doing this, he allows his cooldowns to refresh so that even if he was to get dived by the enemy champions, he is at his strongest point to deal with it. Full HP with as many of his abilities as possible. Not dying on the rift is as powerful as getting a kill on the rift. And what's funny, if we go back to Platinum set, is that even players in lower elos know about this. Master Yi is pathing towards the top lane on the map, so Super Dream respects it. But these correct decisions are few and far between. And this goes to show you how important it is to stack and shove in the rest of these clips as well, how these tiny details can make or break your top lane experience, so make sure to 
take all of these tips into your games. Remember to hit that subscribe button on your way out so you don't miss tomorrow's upload. Till then, this has been the cheers. Oh.